Welcome to the Vigorous q and I'm Coach Steve, here to answer all your bodybuilding related questions. Today's question is from Phil Lavery 101 Hey Steve, love the channel, great content as always. I was hoping you could talk about prolactin and how to recover crashed prolactin. It's been crashed for months now, probably due to overuse of cabergoline while on 400 milligrams a decade. I've been on TRT for six weeks, is this normal? Many thanks for the advice uh, and help. Keep up the great work. All right. So, no, it's not normal for prolactin to be crashed for that long because cabergoline is, I think it has a half-life of three days. Um, so it, sh it should stay in your system for, you know, let's say five, five times the half-life, you know, 14, 14 days, so that's two weeks. So usually cabergoline, especially at the dosages, you know, of one milligram per week, most of it is going to be metabolized by two weeks. Yeah. So now you've been on TRT for six weeks and your prolactin is still low. I mean, it could be caused by many different things. I mean, how high is your vitamin B6 intake? You know, vitamin B6 is also known at higher dosages to reduce prolactin. Um, if you want to increase your prolactin, I mean progesterone steroids will do it, you know, mandrolone, uh, trembolone, I'm not recommending you to add those just to increase your prolactin levels. Um, but, you know, those are known to increase prolactin, you know, growth hormone might be able to increase prolactin, yeah, but it also attaches to prolactin receptor. So it might give you some prolactinogenic, some side effects related to prolactin without actually increasing prolactin levels. And being that low, I mean, well, what side effects are you experiencing? I mean, you're not mentioning any side effects besides, you know, that on the blood work that it's low. I'm sure your libido and, uh, you know, refractory rate in between erections and ejaculations is, uh, is great. So in men, it's very, very rare to have, uh, you know, low levels of prolactin. I think it's diagnosed as hypoprolactinemia. Uh, it could be caused by very high thyroid levels. Yeah? So it's hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism. So it's either very high levels of thyroid or very low levels of thyroid. It can both cause low levels of prolactin. And I think it's also associated with low levels of growth hormone. So if you're doing blood work to check your prolactin levels and it's affecting you, your, your libido, fertility, that kind of stuff, also check your growth hormone levels and your thyroid levels. And, and the cause of the problem might be there. So maybe you have very low growth hormone levels or very high or low thyroid levels, which is causing you the very low prolactin levels. Um, I don't think it's caber. Uh, the caber has been metabolized out of your system completely now after six weeks. So you might have to look at, um, you know, the, the, the causes of what is causing the hypoprolactinemia. So if those are not the cases, if your growth hormone is in range and your thyroid medication is in range, using growth hormone might increase prolactin output. Yeah? Some people experience that, some people don't. It might be a valid approach to add it, but you'll probably have to look at the cause because using growth hormone as a method to release prolactin potentially, um, whether that's releasing prolactin directly or attaching to the prolactin receptors and give you um, similar effects as prolactin because, you know, they're both peptide uh, hormones and, and, you know, some, uh, some peptide amino acid chains are similar between a prolactin growth hormone, you know, pretty similar. So, you might be able to use growth hormone to increase prolactin or cause some sort of prolactin uh, effects related to prolactin. Um, and hopefully it doesn't you know, affect your libido. Because I, I probably the only problem you're experiencing right now is libido related, um, whether that's too high because, you know, <laughs> prolactin, low, uh, low prolactin means, uh, generally speaking, a high libido and especially high refractory rate. Yeah, this is the time between ejaculations and another erection. Um, yeah, fertility levels, you check those too, see if, if low prolactin uh, is, is causing any issues with fertility and make sure you take everything out that could, you know, have some sort of uh, dopamine uh, energistic uh, response. So whether that's a Kerberger line or um, 
man, what else? Some, some stimulants, you know, there's many things that can change your dopamine receptors in the brain. Um, so look at that too. I mean, it's a, it's a little bit hard to diagnose without uh, additional details. Um, I just hope it sends you in the right direction. Um, honestly, I've never, you know, of all the blood work I've seen, I've never seen chronically low prolactin levels unless cabergoline was abused. So that's very high, high doses of cabergoline, two, two milligrams, five milligrams a week. <laughs> don't ask me. That's what people are doing. I don't recommend that stuff. You see the blood work, you tell them, hey, slow down, get off the caber. <laughs> Two weeks later, three weeks later, four weeks later, their prolactin levels are sufficient again, you know, in normal range. So I think it's pretty unique to you. Um, and, and you'll have to look at, at your growth hormone levels and your thyroid levels to see if that could be the cause. And otherwise, um, I want to consult with a doctor. You know, it's, it's, it's a little bit hard to diagnose you over the internet when I have no medical degree, <laughs> you know, or license. So hopefully that sends you in the right direction on how to find a cure uh, to solve your problem. And um, if anybody else has a question that I can answer uh, based on my experiences um, with myself or coaching a decent amount of people, um, yeah, you can contact me for next vigorous Q&A or uh, contact me for the Facebook group. Details are below. Coaching consultation is also available. And I'll see you guys in the next video.